Hello there. Today we are back again with the circa 1980 Philips, well, PM3233 10 megahertz oscilloscope. I have asked you for help in another video regarding the problem that this scope has, that being no sharp traces on the screen. I did get several helpful responses and I am thankful for that. And apparently it all comes down to a part of the circuitry which we have right there which does the focus and it seems like some of the resistors in this circuit like to drift. They go out of tolerance and eventually they are going to cause a problem. I have already done some uh, research in the service manual and it turns out that those resistors are conveniently located on the circuit board all the way in the back, which I have already taken apart to test all the supply voltages, which are right there. So here we go. We have R807 should be 1.8 mega ohms. Let's test this in circuit, see what happens. Well that's considerably lower, so it must be bridged by something. We have R810 should be 820 kilo ohms. So let's see what this is. I can find that that is. There we go. Let's see. Now that seems to be about right. Okay, I'll have to keep on testing stuff. This camera is distracting me quite badly. Well, that was easy. That was very easy. As you can see, we are back in focus. It's perfectly sharp, although of course it looks kind of crappy on the camcorder. You can even see the rising edge of the square wave right there, at least a little bit. You can kind of make it out. And so, we fixed it. So, what's been causing the problem, you're asking? Well, the resistors all checked fine, all well within their tolerance range. So I then moved on and I sprayed all of these little trimmer adjustments off to the side with contact spray, moved them back and forth a little bit and then of course brought them back into their starting position. And I guess that's what fixed the problem. I think one of these little trimmer adjustments developed a bad contact. That's all it was. I also sprayed these front adjustment potentiometers, but there wasn't anything wrong with those because I was turning the front adjustments all the time and it didn't do anything. But as you can see, they have their openings to the top, so all the dust is going to fall right into there. It's kind of a bad design, really. I found another little trimmer adjustment that you can see right in the center of the picture. I'm going to demonstrate on this what I did to the other trimmer adjustments. So we just spray it some contact spray, get it nice and wet, then get in there with a screwdriver and we're going to move it back and forth a little bit. Of course we're going to memorize the original position and when we're done we're going to bring it back into that position like so. And that's all there is to it. So, it is time to put the back cover on here and three screws. That's all. The only problem that remains at this point, you can kind of see it up there, there should be a screw, but it broke off and that was actually something that I messed up. I took the top cover off and when I tried to put it back on that screw wouldn't fit in there properly so I went with a little more force and it, eventually it just screwed in fine. But when I then wanted to remove the top cover another time 
I couldn't get the screw back out anymore, and when I forced it, the head snapped off. And now the remains of the screw are stuck in the screw hole. I guess there is not a whole lot that I can do about that. So now, thanks to your help, I have another piece of test equipment on my workbench. And this is really something that you guys repaired, because until I would have finally checked those trimmer adjustments, it would have taken ages. Now, this scope, well, I guess it looks kind of nice up there, but I don't think it's going to stay, because as you can see, it is way too big for that narrow little table up there. So, once again, everybody who participated in this, thanks for your help. And to everybody else, thanks for watching. See you again soon.